we've taken a few ecstasy tablets. We're all on a really big high. Everything kind of is downhill. Downhill from there. One man's died and four people have been admitted to hospital after taking drugs at the music festival. She just looked like my boy asleep. He was still warm. We've already lost one of our best friends. You know, are we going to lose another? Awful. He was laying on a bed with tubes coming out of him from everywhere and a thing down his throat. Uh, he had just had, like a breathing stuff here. He was in a, they put him in an induced coma so he wasn't breathing for himself. He had a machine that was going. <sighs> there was beeps and this thing going up and down that was raising his chest up and down and. There wasn't any part of him that was working for it itself. Having seen what happened to Christian in such a short space of time, we were absolutely aware of the potential for deterioration with Jordan. He was in a life-threatening condition. And I can just remember walking into this room and like, his whole family's there as if the door's just, like sitting at the sides of the room and I'm walked in and it's just like I'm in, like a shadow in the doorway. In my heart, I was thinking, please don't let him be dead. Please, I can't lose him. Please don't let him die. It seemed like I was looking at myself on, like, a table just lying there, and then when I'd woken up, it seemed like seconds, but I knew that I'd survived the really lucky ordeal. I wouldn't never have a second opportunity like that again. Because of the dizziness, it all felt a bit like a dream. But as soon as I woke up, I knew that it was all real. I just remember feeling, like, a really big sense of, like, fear and just like a realisation of, of what had just happened. He slept a lot. He did ask about Christian. I said, we're going to have to tell him. We need, he's he's going to have to know. Can't not tell him. I was looking straight at my dad and I asked him if Chris was OK. And he just stared at me for a bit and, like, he started looking down and tearing up and, like, had his hand over his mouth. So, like, I knew that he didn't want to he had something he wasn't going to say. And like my, my sister started shaking her head and she was crying. Yeah, I think he just said, I'm sorry, and while he was crying. And he was like, Chris didn't make it. And he just turned his head away and he didn't really want to talk to anybody. You could literally see Jordan's whole world just crumble in there and then, just in that way, he just looked away. Um, I think that was the part of Jordan that got destroyed there and then in that hospital bed. Everyone pulled the curtain and let me have uh, a couple of time to, like, absorb it. I was up constantly with, like, night terrors. Everything that had happened in like Kendall, it's just like happening over and over again. And it's like, that's my latest, most clear memory of Chris, so my mind just wanted to play it and play it and play it. I was just thinking about Kendall and, you know, if I could have done something, if someone else could have done something different. An investigation is underway following the death of a man who was taken ill at the Kendall Calling Music Festival. Staff at the Cumberland Infirmary in Carlisle called police just before 7 o'clock. Early investigations show that some drugs may be connected to these casualties. 
we were all talking about things in the waiting room. Yeah, CID walked through the door. They wanted to speak to me about what had happened. And it was after that interview where they asked me to go down to the, to the station. It's at that point where you're like, right, I'm under investigation. 